last time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Look, whatever you're planning, I ain't buying you. <laughs> well, have you forgotten who I am? I'm King Piccolo, yo. The Demon King Piccolo, yo. Uh-huh. Pussy. You want to blame something? Blame your own. Piccolo! Yamcha and Yajirobe are left absolutely dumbstruck. The Dragon Balls were gone, and Piccolo was stronger than ever before. They were surely doomed. All the while, Goku can only look at the body of Roshi, struggling to move as he begs his master to get up. Shen laughs triumphantly, demanding that Piccolo kill those turtle brats and the ones who betrayed him. He fulfilled his end of the bargain. It was time for the Demon King to fulfill his. However, Piccolo instead smiles, grabbing Shen's head and lifting him up. He's grown tired of his incessant squawking. He would be rewarded with a merciful death. Ah, Shen squeals in fear as a hand pierces his chest, killing him instantly. Piccolo had a total victory, without a shadow of a doubt. The situation was utterly hopeless, but from the Valley of Despair, a single boy rises. Despite all the pain and the loss, Son Goku refused to give up. Piccolo was surprised, yet intrigued. You pathetic whelp! Do you still want to fight despite seeing my glorious new body? You're as stupid as you are weak. You monster! I get it now. Master Roshi died trying to stop you! Krillin died because of you! Give them back! Give me back my friends! Listen here, brat. Have a free lesson before you head to the afterlife. The weak don't get to make demands from the strong. Take that rat with the hat over there. I only let him live because he was useful to me. The moment he stopped being useful, I decided to kill him. Simple as that. But he was your comrade, your friend. Friend? <laughs> now that's a good joke if I've ever heard one. I know no such thing as comrades or friendship. Those are ridiculous notions invented by pathetic humans who couldn't survive by themselves. This is why humanity was born to be slaves. These weak ideals have no place in a demon's world. As long as you cling to your humanity and this weak, sentimental naivety, you're destined to kneel before me. Evil is strength, boy. Evil is absolute. Unless you can make your heart utterly cold and embrace evil, you can never hope to defeat me. Goku feels many emotions bubbling up within him. Rage, fear, despair, sadness, and mix within them all. Excitement? He couldn't understand what he was feeling, but he knew he was on the verge of falling apart at the seams. The last remaining turtle student tried to compose himself, thinking back to his spirit control training with Mutaito. He needed to move without thinking. Now more than ever, Goku recalls his words about staying calm and not succumbing to his mortal desires such as revenge. But how can he stay calm? Goku looks around to see his friends down on the ground, injured and broken. He sees the dead bodies of Chiaotzu, Roshi, and Shen recalling the emotions he felt when he first discovered Krillin's body. His emotions were swelling to the surface. He couldn't contain himself anymore. 
beyond that, it seemed as if the overwhelming aura of evil he had been sensing from Piccolo was seeping into Goku's very own spirit. Piccolo's words ring in the young boy's head, drowning out the words of Master Mutaito. If being cold and merciless is what he needs to win, if he needs to become evil to defeat Piccolo, then that's what he'll be! All these factors swirl together in an explosion of raw fury as Goku goes berserk. His eyes widening out as he lunges at the Demon King with wild ferocity. Piccolo is surprised to see this brat deciding to fight him. Didn't he realize how outmatched he was? However, Piccolo slowly starts to realize that Goku wasn't fighting like a martial artist anymore. He was attacking him like a feral animal that wanted to maul him to death. It made his moves unpredictable, and even worse, he was stronger than he was before. Sure, this brat could hurt him a bit when he was still old, but Piccolo was in his prime now. How could this insignificant flea be able to still damage him like this? Tien, Yamcha, and Yajirobe couldn't believe what they were seeing. Yes. Piccolo was being pushed back, but something was very wrong. This wasn't the kind and honest Goku they knew. Yet, this second wind was short-lived. Piccolo starts to adapt to Berserk Goku's movements. He may have become stronger, but his attacks were simple and predictable. It was much easier to hurt him now than before when he was still loosened. Piccolo starts to turn the tide of battle with brutal and heavy strikes until, eventually, he defeats Goku once more. For the next hour, he beats Goku to within an inch of his life as the sun sets overhead, darkness enveloping the land. He lifts up Goku into the air, laughing maniacally as he tells the boy he did a fantastic job of testing his newfound powers. Piccolo laments that it's a shame that such a ferocious monkey like this has to perish. He could have been useful in his new army. However, he can't risk letting any martial artist live. Yamcha and Tien struggle to get up. They couldn't sit back and let their friend die like this. Piccolo prepares to strike Goku, asking him if he has any final words before his life is snuffed out. Goku stares daggers at Piccolo as his rage bubbles up once more. Goku could sense the evil within Piccolo's heart, and its depths of darkness was suffocating. It was putrid, rancid, and agonizing to feel. It threatened to corrupt Goku's soul even more. As Goku's anger rose, he looked over at something that was shining above the sky. Goku looks up, and almost as if triggered, his wrathful expression drops to a dull, emotionless stare. Piccolo is confused once more. Has this child's spirit finally broken? Did he break this boy's mind? Tien and Yajirobe couldn't tell what was happening. But Yamcha? He understood. But he couldn't believe it! It was impossible! The moon was gone! Master Roshi made sure of it! Yet, there was no mistake. Somehow, some way, the moon had returned to the night sky, illuminating the island down below. Through a strained breath, Yamcha warns Tien to find the strength to move and get out of here as fast as he can. Tien and Piccolo looked on, even more confused than before, until Goku's body started to contort. Fangs grew from Goku's mouth as his body started to expand and stretch out. Piccolo lets go of Goku as his weight and pressure nearly immobilizes him. The evil Demon King, Yamcha, Tien, and Yajirobe watch on in terror and disbelief as Goku transforms into an Ozaru for the first time in many years. Ozaru Goku rampages as his very roar shake the island they are standing on. The giant monkey locks eyes with Piccolo, and from somewhere deep within him, the beast feels an unyielding rage. Piccolo was barely able to dodge an incoming stomp as he becomes the target of the behemoth. 
As Piccolo struggles to stay alive, Yajirobe runs away from his hiding spot as he rushes towards the injured Tien and Yamcha. He picks up the bodies of Chaozu and Roshi, telling the remaining Z Fighters that they have to get out of here. However, Yamcha refuses to leave Goku behind. He knows his weakness, it's his tail. As long as they cut off his tail, they can return Goku back to normal. He volunteers to be the one to cut off the tail, but Tien refuses. He was far too hurt to move. Yamcha was adamant he had to save his friend. Goku has been there for him for so long. It's up to him to bring Goku back. As the heroes struggle with what to do, the Demon King continues his battle against the Great Ape. Piccolo attempts to launch attacks at the Ozaru, but they do no damage. He was infuriated that his new, immense power seemed to do nothing against this brutish ape. Piccolo charges his ki into one massive ki blast at full power. It lands, and the force of the blast knocks everyone back. A massive mushroom cloud forms in the sky, but as Piccolo laughs maniacally, Red eyes flash through the smoke as a massive fist crashes right into Piccolo. The Ozaru roars as he slams his fist repeatedly at the demon. Piccolo is left broken, both physically and mentally. It was over. Yet, not everything was as bleak as it seemed. Piccolo chokes out blood, laughing weakly as he states that even if he can bring ruin to this world, Goku will fulfill his dark desire for destruction. However, he still hasn't given up yet. Piccolo spits out one final egg that flies through the skies. His final act is swiftly ignored as Ozaru Goku grabs Piccolo and picks him up. The beast feels an enormous amount of fury as he stares at the demon. The giant monkey roars once more. <laughs> you blasted baboon! Just you wait. My hatred will not disappear from this world. The seeds of my evil have been planted. <coughs> One day, I will have my revenge. Wait, what are you doing? No, no, no! Piccolo lets out a blood curdling scream as the Ozaru slams his mouth shut and chews. In one single, horrific move, the mighty and terrible Demon King was no more. With Piccolo dead, the massive Ozaru continues its rampage. Yamcha yells at his friends that they must cut off Goku's tail now, or else he might really destroy the world. Despite having a broken leg, Yamcha tries to stand back up. Tien holds on to him as support as the pair attempt to distract the monster. It was up to Yajirobe to cut off his tail. Yet, there wasn't a single solid opening, and Yajirobe was still terrified. There was no way he could do this. Tien shouts at Yajirobe to calm down. Has he forgotten everything Goku has done for him? He gave up everything to save them. Was he really going to let his friend down? Yajirobe thinks back to when he first met Goku, the first guy who he ever had fun fighting with, and his cheerful smile. Maybe, just maybe, he could be just as brave as that little kid. The duo try to distract the beast, but its roars are able to completely immobilize them. The massive Ozaru stands over Yamcha and Tien, preparing to stomp them like bugs. It seemed like this was the end. Just when it seems like the giant monkey is going to finish them off, it suddenly jerks back. Yajirobe was able to cut off its tail in one quick, clean slice. The massive Ozaru remains motionless before it begins to shrink, reverting back into the little Goku they knew and loved. Goku falls towards the earth, but he is quickly caught by Yajirobe. Goku tries to open his eyes and say something, but in an instant, he passes out. 
Within a vast field of darkness, a lone boy finds himself alone. There's no one else here. No master. No friends. No anything. Just him. In this land of nothingness and despair. Or was he? In the distance, the boy sees a pillar of purple miasma shoot from the ground. The boy breaks out into a cold sweat, his heart pumping extremely fast. Then, he hears a laugh. A low, cold, malicious laugh that rings throughout the boy's ears. No, it reverberates through his very soul. I will never die. I will never go away. The seeds of evil. I will have what is rightfully mine. Goku wakes up abruptly. He yells out Piccolo's name, ready to fight once again. But he wasn't on the island anymore. He was at a hospital, and surrounding his bed were his friends. Yamcha and Tien were covered in bandages and casts, but other than that, they were okay. Bulma hugs Goku, crying out that they weren't sure he would ever wake up. He is very confused. What happened to King Piccolo? Where was Chaozu and Master Roshi? The room falls silent. They're hesitant to tell him, but Yajirobe says that they can't lie to the kid. He's tough. He can handle it. Yamcha nods in agreement. It's time to tell Goku the truth. As the group recounts what happened, a flood of memories rush through Goku's mind. Chaozu and Roshi's death, the destruction of Shenron, the absolute stomping Piccolo gave him. But more than that, Goku is horrified to hear how Piccolo was defeated. He had no idea he was the giant monster that killed his grandpa Gohan. Not only that, he... He ate Piccolo! Goku is frustrated and mad at himself. He didn't want to win like this. He didn't want to hurt his friends. Goku blames himself. This was all because he gave up on moving without thinking, and instead surrendered to his anger. His friends tried to comfort Goku, but his feelings of regret and shame remain. He didn't know what to do with himself. His master and his best friend were still dead, and Shenron was gone. But one thing was for sure, he needed to get back to training as soon as possible. Goku tries to stand up, but his friends beg him to lie back down. He suffered so many injuries, he had to rest. Goku claims that he doesn't need anything, all he needs is a sensu bean. The gang isn't sure what he means. But Goku asked Bulma to take him to the land of Korin. The old cat Korin had sensu beans that could heal their wounds in an instant. Bulma wasn't sure about this, but Tien tells her to trust Goku. He surely earned their trust by now. She agrees, and with the help of the latest Capsule Corp playing technology, the Z fighters soon arrive at Korin's tower. Tien and Yamcha opt to climb the tower despite their injuries. This would serve to be good training. On the other hand, Goku has to convince Yajirobe to carry him up the tower with the promise of the sensu beans. He was still mad that he still hadn't gotten his fees like he was promised. Bulma, Launch, and Poir wish them luck as the boys climb the tower. It took some time, but eventually... The heroes arrived at the top of Korin Tower. The cat greets Goku and his guests, but Yajirobe is mad. He wants his feast now! The cat hands out several sensu beans and gives one each to the warriors, telling them to consider this their rewards for defeating King Piccolo. Yajirobe feels ripped off, but once they eat their beans, Deal. all their bellies are filled and their wounds are healed instantly. The gang can't believe it, but Goku was glad to finally be back to his normal self. He asks Korin if he knows what happened with King Piccolo, and the cat nods. He saw the whole thing. Yamcha asks the wise cat if he knows if there is any way to bring back Shenron, but Korin isn't sure. Except... Maybe... There might be one way, 
their ears perk up as Korn explains that the creator of the Dragon Balls was God himself. If they see him, he might just fix the balls. Tien can't believe what he's hearing, and Yadrobi is sure this is a joke. Was God real? Well, if demons were real, then God must be too. Korn explains that only someone strong with a pure heart could see Kami. Certainly, Goku fit the bill. But more than that, the only way to meet Kami is with the power pull, which, thankfully, Goku managed to keep on him, connecting the pull to the very top of Korin Tower. Goku tells the rest of his friends that he's going up to meet Kami and requests that he resurrect Shenron. Korin gives him a bell that labels him worthy to Kami, as Tien, Yamcha, and Yajirobe wish Goku the best of luck. Power pole extends! As the power like pole extends upwards beyond the clouds, <laughs> Goku smiles for the first time in a while. He was filled with so much hope once more. Hello everyone! Professor Chimp here. This has been Season 1 of What If Goku Unlocked Ultra Instinct Early. It's been a long road to get here, far longer than I would have liked, but I'm glad that this first stretch of the journey is done. A lot has happened in Goku's quest to master moving without thinking, including his first major challenge which he barely survived. Will the consequences of his actions come back to haunt him? Only time will tell. I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped make this project come to life. Firstly, thank you to I'm Shadow 007 for voicing Kid Goku throughout this entire series. She does fantastic work and I cannot recommend her enough. If you need a voice actress, please consider her for your work. Next, I'd like to thank my D&D friends for staying up with me until late at night to review my editing progress and keeping me company. It means so much to me, more than y'all know. Lastly, I wanted to thank every single one of you for sticking around for this series for so long. I wouldn't be making this entire series if it wasn't for your support. For now, I'll be taking a short break from UI Goku early to focus on other much shorter projects. Mainly one-shots of Dragon Ball and... also... well... maybe something involving pirates. We'll have to wait and see. As a reminder, if you like the stuff I do, please consider joining my Discord server. Over there, I frequently talk to the rest of the Banana Club community, as well as post edits for my videos and discuss potential future what-ifs. Speaking of videos, I'm in the process of creating content for another gaming-focused channel called Dr. Professor Chimp. With October right around the corner, I thought it'd be fitting to release some Five Nights at Freddy's videos in the meantime while I work on my what-ifs. At the time of this recording, the video for the first part should be out by now. This won't be a replacement to my regular channel, nor will it get in the way of my what-if content. I just welcome you guys to join my friends and I as we journey through the haunted halls of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. With a twist. I'd really appreciate it if you did. I'm also considering creating a Patreon page, where I can share all progress for future videos as well as early access to these videos. Maybe I could also do shorter form content? like a podcast or audio-only what-ifs. Please let me know your thoughts, questions, or concerns in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear what y'all have to say. If you really like my videos and you want to see more, consider clicking on that like button, subscribe, as well as hitting that bell so you can stay notified of all my future videos. This has been Professor Chimp. Stay safe out there, and I hope to see you guys next time.